of the greatest peacetime spy dramas in the nation's history reaches its climax as Julius Rosenberg and Morton Sobel, convicted of revealing atomic secrets to the Russians, enter the federal building in New York to hear their doom. Another of the spy ring, Mrs. Ethel Rosenberg, who with her husband was convicted of actually transmitting the secrets to Russia through Soviet diplomatic channels. The ring was first uncovered following the arrest of Klaus Fuchs in England. David Greenglass, Mrs. Rosenberg's brother, confessed theft of the secrets while stationed at the Los Alamos Atomic Project. He later became the government's chief witness in the prosecution of Sobel and the Rosenbergs. It is a stern jurist they face in Judge Irving Kaufman. After administering a tongue lashing in which he charged them with the indirect death of thousands of men in Korea, he sentenced both Rosenbergs to death in the electric chair and Sobel to 30 years in prison. At the time these pictures were made, Greenglass still had to hear his fate. It is the first time in peacetime that such a death penalty has been handed down. And while appeals to the highest courts are planned, it certainly appears that the spies are headed along a one-way street. In 1953, two Americans, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, were convicted of spying for the Soviet Union. They were sentenced to death. They had young children, and their fate roused protests in America and across the world. For some young lawyers, the sentence breached the Constitution. They sought judges to get a stay of execution. Judge Frank looked at us. And he says something that we have never, never forgotten. He said, if I were as young as you are, I would be sitting there saying the same things you're saying, arguing the same points you're arguing, making the same argument that these planned executions are invalid, but when you are as old as I am, you will understand why I cannot do it. And he stands up, turns his back to us, walks away, and we're devastated. We began to sense something which in later years we understood so clearly, and that was that Jerome Frank, as the leading liberal judge was terrorized himself and frightened by the atmosphere of fear in the country. That if he, as a liberal, would do something to save Julius and Ethel Rosenberg's life, he would be charged as a commie. The Rosenbergs were executed. He died quickly. There didn't seem to be too much life left in him when he entered behind the rabbi. He seemed to be walking in a cadence of steps as, as if keeping in time with the muttering of the 23rd Psalm. She died a lot harder. When it appeared that she had received enough electricity to kill an ordinary person and, and had received the exact amount that had killed her husband, the doctors went over and pulled down the cheap prison dress, a little dark green printed job and place the stethoscopes, stethoscopes, I can't say it, 
placed the stethoscopes uh, to her and then looked around, at, looked at each other rather dumbfounded and seemed surprised that she was not dead. And she was given more electricity, which started again that kind of a ghastly plume of smoke that rose from her head and went up against the skylight uh, overhead. After two more of those jolts, uh, Ethel Rosenberg uh, had met a maker. She'll have a lot of explaining to do, too.